All right. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Hey. Yeah. Thank. Thank you for coming to this presentation. So we'll be doing a presentation on uh, you know theming at scale, like a, a case study of Falwell at University of Minnesota. So my name is Dimitri Tadaga. I am a senior developer and technical team lead in university relations. Um, I develop websites. I lead a team of web developers as well. I am a lead developer for the Falwell project and I have been working on this project almost from the start of the project seven years ago. So with me today, Kiran Kolhes and Alina Rimbu from the Drupal team in Office of Information Technology uh, are presenting. Kiran, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. So yeah, I'm Kieran. I work in the uh, Drupal team at the University of Minnesota Office of Information Technology. I've been involved with that team for over six years now. My current role is product owner for the Drupal platform at the U, as well as Pope Tech, which is our accessibility checking tool. And Alina is one of my team members. Hi, I'm Alina Rumbu. Um, I'm one of the developers in the Drupal team. Um, I've been in the Drupal team since uh, we adopted Drupal uh, 13 years ago, I think. Um, and I support the Drupal platform. Yeah, thank you, Kiran and Alina. So on this presentation, we'll be talking about introduction about the full web web team, some benefits and the development and implementation process from university relations point of view and from the Drupal team in OIT as well. And also we'll talk about the current state of Fallwell. We share some stats, uh, you know, just to demo current, um, the current scale. And we'll be doing a quick demo um, just to show you a couple of components and some of the websites that are built using the Fallwell web team. And also we'll talk about challenges and lesson learned. And also uh, we have a slide uh, to discuss upcoming new components and uh, Fallwell 2.0. And at the end, we'll have some time uh, for questions. Uh, yeah, thank you. So Fallwell. Uh, Fallwell is a design system and a web theme for a Drupal platform we use here in University of Minnesota. And the project began in 2017 uh, with a Drupal 8, you know, platform. And since then, you know, we have developed uh, more than 30 uh, uh, web team components. And, you know, this project um, uh, was developed in close collaboration with the uh, Office of the Information Technology, the Disability Resource Center, University Relations, and with valuable input um, from campus developers, designers, and uh, communicators. Um, we developed Fallwell in uh, a modular manner where we break down components into uh, the smallest and manageable pieces and we follow um, a design concept called the atomic design principle where we start uh, everything from the atomic level and then you know we mix and match and create uh, molecules and molecules grow into organisms and we combine those organisms together and create templates and then finally, using those templates, you create pages. So this is the kind of principle we follow when we design and develop uh, Fallwell components. So we follow uh, three major uh, design principles when uh, we design and develop Fallwell components. The first one is minimal. So we use um, very minimal design elements on our uh, components uh, in order for you know in order for the content to stand out so we want the content to be you know center of everything so uh, we we make our design elements as minimal as possible the other one is adaptable so uh, we make sure each and every components are adaptable and responsive regardless of any screen sizes any devices or um, any kinds of browsers and the third one is accessible 
Accessibility is front and center here in University of Minnesota. Everything we do, every component we develop uh, must be um, accessible. And for that, we use the WCAG 2.1 AA standards. So each and every component in Falwell meets the WCAG 2.1 AA standards. And always we strive to meet WCAG 2.1 AAA standards. So accessibility is really, really a big deal in the, here in the university. So um, that's how Falwell components are designed and developed. So the Falwell design system and the Falwell uh, web team provides a number of benefits. Um, it's user friendly, it is cost effective and efficient. Um, like I mentioned earlier, it is accessible and it is multi-platform. We have a pattern library system um, to provide those components uh, for you know, platforms that, that are not using you know, uh, Drupal. So, if there are units not using Drupal, we have the pattern library system, so we make available those components in that pattern library system. And also, it is perception uh, enhancing as well. So development and implementation process. Uh, from university relations side of it, you know, um, the first step would be component selection. So we use uh, two major steps, you know, uh, uh, to gather components or to get a request. The first one is uh, user submit requests through a CANI tool. We have a tool called CANI, which is embedded in the Fallwell website. If you go to the feedback section of the Fallwell website, you can see a form where it just gives you the ability to submit, you know, bug or to submit, um, you know, a request for a new component and things like that. That's one way of, you know, uh, we get uh, component requests. The second one is our team may also propose new components based on evolving needs. So this request might come from the Drupal team in OIT, from university relations, for, from you know any other units across the university. So that's also another way how we get you know requests for uh, new components. So as soon as we got that request, the next step would be the research uh, step. So we spend a lot of time on this research uh, phase. We conduct in-depth research from usability, accessibility, and implementation feasibility perspectives as well. Not every components are feasible to implement in Drupal. Not every components are accessible. So we take uh, all those scenarios into considerations when we do our research. Then we draft detailed requirement. As you know, requirement is the major step. If you don't get all requirements correct from the very beginning, it is highly likely you run into issues on your final product. So we, we really give a high emphasis on requirement gathering. And during this requirement gathering, you know, um, we ensure that so many use cases, so many scenarios are taken into consideration because this Fallwell web team is designed for the entire university. So we need to consider how different colleges, you know, address certain things. So we, you know, we try to gather as many scenarios as possible, as many use cases as, as possible. So that's why, you know, we spend really a considerable amount of time, you know, doing researches, you know, doing analysis of those, you know, uh, uh, use cases and things like that. And once we finalize that, the next uh, step would be to identify inspiration sites or example pages uh, that serves as a reference. So those are the inspiration sites and example pages. Uh, sometimes they are from, you know, websites uh, within our colleges or units, or even sometimes we explore different inspiration sites and pages even outside of the university. Uh, it could be peer universities, it could be, you know, a company, or, you know, it could be any kinds of website. So we just do the research to get some kinds of inspirations. After that, we compile uh, our findings in a comprehensive research document. Um, so each and every component has their own research document. On that research document, 
all the requirements are clearly uh, specified, all the use cases are clearly specified, all the accessibility and usability considerations are clearly specified on those research documents. So we spend really a considerable amount of time on you know, the research part. The third step is the design uh, step. Uh, here we design the, uh, you know, the component with a focus on accessibility and usability. We have really amazing team of designers and you know, uh, we design each component uh, with a focus on accessibility and usability and we ensure the designs address various you know, uh, user needs and scenarios. So we review those scenarios you know, we found out during the second step with a designer and, you know, we need to make sure those scenarios are addressed during that design process and step as well. Once a component is designed, the next step would be the development uh, phase. So um, once I receive those mockups or like the final mockups, you know, um, the first step would be to select a module and library that powers that specific component. In most cases, the components are powered by a module or a library or a module and a library, depending on you know, what kinds of functionality we are trying to achieve with that component. And in some cases, some components doesn't require either a module or uh, a library. It could be simple HTML, framework with a little bit of styling. Yeah, then um, once uh, we pass that stage, we develop a component uh, following the defined requirements. So we review the research document, and based on those requirements, based on those scenarios, we start the development work. And once we finish the development work, we create example pages for reference and testing, and once we created the, you know, the example pages, the next step would be, you know, performing extensive testing. Yeah, we spend really, really considerable amount of time doing this extensive testing because it is very important to catch everything uh, on the early stage before, you know, we release it and become, you know, part of, you know, the platform. Uh, one of the I mean, one of the testing uh, we are doing is ex accessibility testing. We do both automated and manual methods uh, because, as you know, those automated tools doesn't capture everything. So we focus mostly on you know doing manual testing. So we spend a lot of time doing manual testing and we try to uncover as many you know, accessibility issues as possible and address them you know, uh, from, you know, uh, from the uh, grassroots. So one thing we do in Fallwell is we try to address you know, accessibility issues um, at the ground level. You know, we don't wanna do any kinds of uh, retrofitting or anything like that. Everything should be addressed you know, uh, from the very beginning. Uh, once we perform, you know, accessibility testing, the next, uh, you know, testing would be performance testing. You know, we need to make sure each and every component, uh, you know, are loading, um, you know, optimally and, you know, um, using resources efficiently. So we need to make sure those loading times and resource, like resource efficiency has been used uh, properly. Once we finish that, we do uh, browser and device testing. We test across multiple platforms and multiple browsers. And when we do those testing, you know, uh, we use actual devices because, you know, when you use emulators, you know, the behavior and the result you get on browser emulators versus actual devices are sometimes different. So we prefer to use like actual devices. So we have, you know, multiple version of, you know, uh, mobile phones. We use, you know, different version of iPhones, Androids and things like that. And when it comes to tablets as well, we use iPads, Android, you know, uh, tablets and you know other devices as well so we need to make sure those testing has been done on actual device rather than emulators and also um 
Uh, we do usability testing as well, uh, you know, to ensure a seamless user experience. We have a usability lab here in the university, so we work with our usability experts uh, and we do usability testing for our components and based on you know those usability test results, we modify components, we made fix as needed. And the fifth step is, uh, you know, once the component is developed, once we address all, uh, you know, um, issues, uh, the fifth step would be um, sharing the, the pages uh, with uh, the Falwell Governance Committee for review. Then, um, after we share uh, with the Falwell Governance Committee, we collect uh, feedback and we document all those feedbacks we received from the Falwell Governance Committee, and we make tweaks and adjustments as needed based on the feedback we received from uh, the Falwell Governance Committee. And once we wrap up those feedback, we prepare the component for handoff to the Drupal team in OIT, and we provide all the necessary assets, code, modules uh, to the Drupal team, and the Drupal team begins implementation phase to integrate the components into the platform. So once the Drupal team implemented, Again, you know, they will reach out to us and we'll do a second and third round of testing. So, um, for Drupal Teams process, I invite Kiran uh, to walk us through the process. Yeah, so our part of the process is a lot shorter. We're just coming involved in the last mile here. But we do have to integrate our follow work in with the rest of our work. Um, so we get a prioritized list about once a quarter from UR with bug fixes as well as enhancements to existing components and then sometimes new components mixed in as well. So we know what are their top priorities and then we have to figure out how to fit it in with our other top priorities and staffing needs. And then we get those stories into our sprints since we are using Agile. But we do have all of our developers on the team take turns working on the FOWL stuff. We don't just have a FOWL person who's only doing that work. And Alina is going to tell you a little bit more about the actual implementation steps on our end. Um, the follow-up theme is stored in uh, GitHub repository, uh, so when we start making changes, we develop in a feature branch, and then we run automated regression uh, tests. Um, my colleagues, Devin and Ch Jamil, had a presentation earlier today on um, automated regression tests, um, so the recording from that should be available later online. Um, once we find issues, if you find issues with the automated, uh, during the automated regression test, we fix them, and then we deploy to the UR test environment uh, for the UR team to conduct additional manual testing. Um, once approved, we merge all the changes into the release, which we then deploy to the stage environment uh, for all the other site uh, customers um, to test. Um, the next step is deploying to production, um, and then you, you are conducts uh, additional ver verification in, once in production. Um, we have some stats for uh, the follow-up team. Um, we have more than 30 components that we have developed are available for use now. Um, we have about 1,600 uh, Drupal sites at the U of M that use um, Falwell which is about 86% of the total number of human Drupal sites. Um, and the monthly traffic is more than 400 million requests per month. And Kieran um, and, and Dimitri will do a demo of Falwell. Oh, thank you, Alina. Um, I will do, for the sake of time, you know, I will do just a quick demo of, uh, you know, um, a couple of components from uh, Falwell side and Kiran will walk us through, uh, you know, various types of callouts. Um, and I will walk you through a uh, navigation component. So um, we have different navigation components as part of Falwell. Uh, we have uh, the accordion components, we have breadcrumbs, you know, we have categories and tags, we have horizontal drop-down menu, we have linked lists, uh, we have mobile menu, we have pagination, 
tabs and vertical menu. Uh, those are uh, the navigations uh, we have on Folwell. As you can see, you know, this is a horizontal navigation we use on Folwell. So we use, uh, you know, Superfish uh, library, but we made customization to Superfish library to make it more accessible. So we, we made um, some behavior changes and uh, a few adjustments as well. Um, yeah, other than that, I would like you uh, to walk you through some of a website that has been developed using uh, Fallwell out of the box. Uh, one example I would like to share with you guys is a College of Pharmacy uh, website. Um, this is one of the largest websites uh, you know our team has built. It, is, it has around 18 microsites in it. Uh, that means 18 smaller sites within this large site. And everything you see on this site is uh, full well out of the box. All the components you are seeing, um, you know, the call out you are seeing here, the button groups, um, button groups with image, the infographic, um, all the components you are um, seeing on this website is a uh, product of Fallwell. So we used Fallwell out of the box on this site. Uh, the unit footer designs, um, various types of, you know, uh, call outs, as you can see. If you navigate through this website, you will see how effectively and efficiently, you know, uh, different Fallwell components has been used on this massive website. Um, the other example page, uh, example site uh, I would like to share is um, um, the um, nursing site. Um, the same is true here as well. Um, you know, uh, the components that have been used here are Falwell components. This site also uh, uh, built using the Falwell, uh, um, you know, um, um, web theme. All the components you are seeing uh, on this site as well, uh, it's uh, fall well out of the box. Uh, the unit footer, you know, the different kinds of, you know, button groups, the callouts you see across various pages, those are uh, all fall well components. Um, yeah, the other example site uh, is a College of Veterinary Medicine uh, website as well. This is also another great example how you can use Fallwell uh, on, you know, uh, on various scales. Uh, this site is also built using the Fallwell web team and we used uh, different components differently across different pages. So if you guys are interested uh, to see, you know, some of the example uh, sites that are built using Fallwell, uh, you can go to Fallwell example sites and feature sites. We have, um, you know, listed uh, some of the uh, feature sites uh, submitted to us. As you can see, we have already a bunch of sites that were uh, built using Fallwell. Uh, for units who would like to submit their sites, uh, you know, uh, that were built using Fallwell, we have an option here. Uh, you can submit. Uh, to us and uh, we'll make it uh, available as part of these example pages. Uh, yeah, Kiran will walk us through uh, the, the callout component. Uh, thank you. Um, so yeah, you can see on your own time, if, if, um, if you have time later, we've got information about all of the different components on the follow website with examples. Um, but for the sake of time here, we're just going to show the callouts um, because this is one of our most widely used components. Um, pretty much any site using Fallwell is going to be using some of these different types of, of callouts. It's just such an easy way to make your, your site look more professional and you have a lot of different options that we have available here. Um, all branded with some you know neutral grays as well, but otherwise the good old maroon and gold. Um, so you can see we can we have options that to include photos as well as buttons um, in addition to overlay callouts and then we have these kind of hidden away on their own page but we also have a bunch more options with transparent image overlay callouts so you can see the transparency peeking through 
same branded colors. Again, just a lot of flexibility, different options to um, have professional callouts on your site that are all available to um, U of M site owners out of the box. So then we'll go back over here and challenges. We'll go back to slideshow mode. Okay, so we're going to move along to talking about challenges and lessons learned. One of the biggest challenges for us that we've encountered is that as we go to make updates and enhancements to existing components, site owners sometimes have made customizations to those components on their sites that we don't know about that can break when we go to make these changes. Um, we do, you know, put them in stage first for everyone to test, but, you know, sometimes some things get mixed missed so um, the, we were having this problem a lot in particular with the Falwell CK editor text format so about a year and a half ago we ended up locking down the filters so that we're reading those in from a master file that we compiled based on all the things everyone needed and we can add to that upon request but that's made it a much less fragile for everyone and of course people can still make their own text formats if they want to if they have some other need Going forward, we're planning for new components to make the paragraph types read only. We did some analysis to see, you know, is it feasible to kind of set everything back to a standard set of configs for these, but there's been so much drift over time on different sites based on what we found that's just not feasible at this point to do that. Um, what we do ask is that site owners submit feature requests for customizations that they need so they can be officially incorporated. Um, into you know our planned set that we're aware of um, but we do realize there's going to be one-offs you know we can only kind of meet the needs of maybe 80 percent or so right uh 86 percent of um of the site so there there are times where people are going to need to do customizations on their sites and in that case we encourage you to make your own custom paragraph types based off the follow types so that you don't have to worry about that or at least keep track of what customizations you've made so you can specifically look out for that in testing as we do updates to keep that in mind. And then Dimitri is going to talk a little bit about another challenge with module and library availability. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Kieran. Um, to add a little bit um, on what Kieran uh, said, you know, if units would like to make uh, some customizations uh, on an existing component, we highly encourage units to use a sub-team. They can sub-team for well and they can, you know, they can make whatever customization uh, they want. But if they directly edit those files, you know, it is highly likely you run into a lot of issues when, when we push updates or enhancements and things like that. Um, yeah, the other challenge I would like uh, to talk about is module and library availability. You know, this is like one of the challenges we face, uh, you know, uh, often, you know, um, sometimes, um, you know, I, it's it's hard to find module and library that meet specific need of our component. Um, we have really um, a, a strict requirement for accessibility and module stability in order you know for us to pick uh, certain modules or library those modules and library uh, should be stable enough should be secured and it should uh, you know at least it should meet you know um, uh, 95 percent of our requirements otherwise it's very very hard for us to use uh, those kinds of libraries and modules so um, that's like uh, uh, you know, uh, w one of the challenges we run. So uh, when, you know, when those kinds of suitable modules are not available, definitely it will slow down the development and um, it requires additional customization to make that component, you know, uh, meet our high standards. So I can, I can provide a couple of examples on this. The first, you know, the first thing always came to my mind is the mega menu. You know, uh, we have been um, planning to provide a mega menu module as part of Fallwell, but one of the challenges we run into is like um, some of the modules and libraries out there, it doesn't meet 
uh, all of our requirements, uh, especially from accessibility point of view. And also some of our requirements have, you know, additional features like, you know, our users would like to have the ability to drag and drop media elements. They would like to use videos, images as part of their mega menu. And those kinds of media elements need to be accessible and meet the WCAG 2.1 AA standards. So yeah, we have been running into you know issues where getting really uh, the best module and library to achieve that, and you know that's one of the examples you know uh, always comes to my mind uh, because of that. You know we have been doing you know we have been continuing our research uh, and you know we have been planning to do some kinds of customizations to make sure the mega menu module we uh, sorry the mega menu component. Uh, we provide as part of Fallwell should meet our accessibility standards. So this is like another challenge usually, uh, you know, we run into uh, during the course of, you know, the Fallwell web development uh, project. Um, new components. So, uh, Kiran. Yes. Um, so I just wanted to briefly tell you about the next three new components that are planned for Fallwell. One is a directional link, so you can use that to navigate between sections of content, not just an anchor link, because you can use images too. We're also gonna add equal height callouts for two, three, or four column options for that. And then the other one is an activity timeline, so you can display you know, a list of events or steps in a series or, or process. And then we have had a dream of Fallwell 2.0 for quite a while now, um, and Dimitri's gonna tell you a little bit more about that. Thank you, Kiran. Yeah, like Kiran said, we have been thinking about Fallwell 2.0 for quite some time now. And, you know, as part of Fallwell 2.0, you know, there are a few things we would like to address and add. Uh, the first thing is we would like to refactor some of the components, some of our cores that is available in, you know, in the current Fallwell version. And also we would like to make uh, a lot of enhancement to the existing component as well uh, to make them, you know, um, more usable and to add, you know, uh, more features and things like that. And also, as part of this Fallwell 2.0 plan, uh, you know, we are planning to develop more newer components as well. We have a list of components on our plan, so we are planning to make those components available as part of 2.0. At the same time, we are planning to explore uh, new things like, you know, single component directory, single directory components, and things like that. You know, I would like to try those kinds of newer things, you know, if it is feasible for us to use maybe recipes, you know, we'll, we'll wait and explore things, you know, if it is feasible for us in Fallwell 2.0, uh, yeah, we'll try those kinds of things. Um, and also, we are planning to to provide built-in content types uh, that have their own style, uh, that have their own um, designs and things like that. So those are like uh, part of our plan. Uh, we don't have like a specific timeline for Fallwell uh, 2.0. But as soon as we finalize our plans, as soon as we finalize, you know, uh, all those logistics, uh, definitely we'll share with the university community when the Fallwell 2.0, uh, you know, uh, uh, web theme is going to be available. Um, so stay tuned. Um, yeah, we'll share more information on that. But yeah, we have been we have been thinking about it really for quite some time, just to make really significant changes to the existing, you know, uh, Fallwell component. Um, yeah, other than that, um, if any of you has any questions or, you know, if there are folks from, you know, Drupal agency or, you know, agency who works with, you know, our um, units, and if we would like to learn more about Fallwell, we are more than happy to schedule a meeting so that we can discuss in detail uh, our team and the Drupal team in OIT. We have uh, flexibility to accommodate those kinds of requests. Uh, yeah. Other than that, if you have questions, yeah, 
What the? kind of a release schedule are you guys on? I had no idea this was so huge and like so many people rely on it. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah, release schedule. Yeah, so the as far as from the Drupal side, um, usually every three weeks uh, we have a release. That's not always been the... <laughs> Sometimes we run into the delays like we did very recently. Um, but typically it's about every three weeks and our customers get a two week or more window of testing in the stage environment as well to catch issues before it goes into production. Um, not every release is going to have Fowell related updates in it, but often they do. So follow the code, please. Yeah. yeah, we do have, you know, at the university we have a change freeze calendar right around start of semester and end of semester and blah blah. There's a lot of the times that we're not allowed to make changes, so that is a challenge too. Yeah. I'll ask a follow-up to that. Since I graduated from the Morris campus uh, many, many years ago, uh, is that something working on their campus's content and their campus's work, that's something you do as opposed to their staff just out of interest? Uh, content? Yeah, or whatever gets pushed out. Yeah, I mean, uh, we provide this component uh, as part of the web, uh, you know, the, with the web team, mm -hmm. and it's up to the campuses to develop content and to work on, on those contents. We are mostly developing, you know, components and uh, the technology side of things. I, this is Sarah, the, the director from Digital or, or University Relations, and I would say that we do support the system campuses by um, providing the web, some of the web development work that's necessary for those system campuses. Um, and we're working very closely with um, in different uh, contacts within Morris, Duluth, Brixton, and Rochester. Interesting. Uh, I realize you're really early in the fall of 2.0, but you think you've thought about the point that it's going to be an opt-in thing, or is everybody going to get it once it does happen? I'm thinking of sites that have something that you need to keep track of. The small changes that come out with updates, it's quite easy, but if you have a like, sweep of change, that is going to be more difficult. Yeah, I think once we finalize you know, our uh, plans, those are the kind of thing we are really, you know, thinking about it, how deployment, you know, would work, you know, because parallelly we're going to have an existing Fallwell component and how we can, you know, create some kinds of smooth transition between, you know, the existing component and, you know, the, the new Fallwell 2.0 uh, component. Um, I think deployment-wise, hopefully it's going to be the same subscription. Yeah, yeah I mean, so still, we, don't we haven't thought about it <laughs> yeah. yet, and yeah. we'll definitely seek input from the Drupal Advisory yeah. Board Committee as well before yeah. proceeding with anything there. Yeah. Oh, please. Okay. For the, the group that's creating the initial versions of the components and the libraries and the assets before they provide it to the Drupal team, are they doing that completely outside of Drupal? Um, very good question. Um, so um, we do it inside Drupal. Uh, we develop it inside Drupal, but we have a pattern library system so that, uh, you know, units who has, you know, websites outside of Drupal, they can use that pattern library system. So we do it in Drupal. At the same time, we provide that component for, you know, platforms that are using, uh, you know, um, okay. Outside I was of just wondering how, how could they build it all outside of Drupal but then give <laughs> Drupal what they needed? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was a little confused there. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay, I have a couple of questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, you talked about doing requirements, which I love. Where are you storing those requirements and documentation and research that you're gathering? Is that living in a Jira ticket? Is that living in Confluence? What's your repository? Yep, it is internal document. It's been shared with the Fallwell uh, project team. Yep. So it is internal document saved in you know uh, Google Drive. Got it. And are you, uh, to piggyback on that question, just to make sure I understand, um, are you working with UI and UX designers? Are they, are they using that pattern library or are they creating that new things and being like, 
here's something cool that's unique that we've never done before. And they're just creating from like a Figma file or whatever. Yeah, I mean, uh, we have a Figma subscription as well for our designers. Yep. Uh, yeah, the, our designer, you know, uh, leverage Figma as well. Uh, but, you know, when they create their design, usually they provide us, like, the mock-up, mm -hmm. and we build based on that mock-up. Got it. I have two more questions. Sure. Let me get quick. Sorry. Um, who retires components? So what if a component is being only used in, like, one website and it's super old and it needs to go to the retirement community. Like who's who's checking on that? Who's looking at your 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 technical debt? Yeah, we have a, a team like we have a follow-up team which consists the Drupal team and university relations team. Yeah. So we have weekly um, bi-weekly check-in and I'm part of you know the Drupal um, team you know weekly meetings yep. and you know demo sessions so we have a lot of touch points you know to review those kinds of uh, you know technical dates so that's our opportunity you know to review whether there is a certain component we need to push it into a retirement section yeah. so like we have multiple checkpoints okay. so that's how we identify uh, you know those kinds of components and also you know we we we, we review data as well you know, we uh, whenever we get a good data, um, I mean, the other day, Kieran and I were talking about, you know, what percentage of component is really heavily used across, you know, uh, uh, our websites and things like that. So we also look at those data as well. So. Got it. And my final question is, say you have some sort of large scale change, like the U of M decides to change their font. Let's just make something up. How do you push that to all of the properties that you own. Like is that is maybe that's a technical question. I just don't know Drupal as well as everybody else in the room. But like how do you do that? How would you do that? Yeah, we have a, a branding team in university relation, yeah. uh, and that branding team, uh, along with the account services team, they do that revision, yep. and we have a, a list of you know approval processes we just you know to follow. So usually it comes from the branding team. We have like a list of you know experts in that branding team, so we get you know, uh, recommendations and, uh, you know, guidance from that team. And is it, is it easy to do? Is it quick? Oh, uh, it's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> yeah, we, so far, luckily, we, we never run into those kinds of significant changes, okay. you know. <laughs> but, yeah, definitely, it will, it will impact a lot of things, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, what is the history behind the Fullwell name, or how did you settle on that name for the program? Very good question. Um, I think the the Fullwell, you know, one of our buildings, and you know, uh, maybe Sarah can help me with, you know, the history behind it. <laughs> I uh, yeah, it, it was. We were talking about it, and I think that it was that we wanted to have. Uh, go off of the buildings that are on the Twin Cities campus, um, and you know that that sure. familiarity that we would have. So yeah, yeah. Is it named after a person or like what's the? Yeah, I think I believe so. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, for example, in our university relations, you know, we have a sub team called Morel. Morel is our office building, so we name it after our office building Morel. So that's that kind of naming pattern. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Any other question? Yes, please. Um, earlier, when you were talking about your usability testing and accessibility testing, are you testing each component separately, or are you kind of things together in a whole um, page or is it kind of just one-off elements? Yeah, both. We follow both processes and we have done uh, both ways. Um, for example, we have <laughs> tested vertical navigation in combination with horizontal navigation together because they are like goes hand in hand. So since they are related, we, we went to our usability lab and we tested vertical navigation uh, along with our horizontal navigation. But there are cases where, you know, uh, we just only do usability testing for a single component. So it just depending on, you know, the use cases.
And I just want to mention for the U of M folks in the room, if you don't know this, you can use the Usability Lab as well. Those services are available to you. I believe it's free. You just need to probably get in their backlog of requests, but um, they'll conduct usability testing on your behalf for your website. So that's a great service that's available to you. I will also add that the new <coughs> Office of Digital Accessibility will do digital accessibility testing, which is an extensive manual process that they do. Yeah. So they're a great resource as well. Yeah, this is a very good resource to use as well. The Office of Digital, digital Accessibility is staffing the University Relations table in the main hallway if you want to talk to someone. Nice. Thank you, Lisa. Actually, actually, he had to leave at two. <laughs> 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 yes, please. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to say I work here at the university, and I have very much appreciated all of you guys' help. Thank Thanks. you so much mm -hmm. for all that you do. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, John. Some yes, please. Sorry. <laughs> I was writing notes. Um, talk to me about SEO. Do you develop with SEO in mind, or mm -hmm. do you leave that more to the content side of the house? So, are you thinking through H1, H2? Are you setting rules in there as you're developing and what needs to be on a page? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we keep in mind, uh, like, whenever we develop components, SEO also, you know, part of, um, you know, our requirements. Um, so, um, for, like, for components, one of the things, you know, we usually do is whether, you know, the headings are appropriately, you know, um, 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 yeah, appropriately uh, configured and designed. And the other thing is, are we providing enough, you know, fields for meta description, um, you know, and those kinds of things. So SEO is part of our processes as well. Um, and in addition to that, you know, once we provide, you know, these components, we have SEO experts in our team, which is Shari right behind you. She will provide uh, consultations if you need to have any kinds of SEO related uh, questions or if there are, if their sites need any SEO attentions or anything like that. We are a little over on time, so we should probably. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>